What is going on, I've Warriors? So today is an important day because this is the culmination of a study that I talked about way back in 2018 and how it was getting so much uh, publicity through the news outlets where I was getting DMs all the time like, whoa, does intermittent fasting cause diabetes? Because look, this is what I'm seeing. But it was a non-published study and it took over two years for the study to finally be published. Well, we're going to dive into that study and I think it's pretty interesting. You guys are going to want to take a look at this. Without any further ado, let's break it down in the video. Now, this study was very polarizing when it first came out um, in terms of the abstract, an abstract before the full study, an abstract before the actual abstract. But it talked about intermittent fasting uh, possibly um, elevating uh, insulin resistance, creating insulin resistance, and, and also subsequently is assisting the increase in the possible type 2 diabetes in patients, right? But obviously, they use Winstar rats, right? And they used young female Winstar rats. So there was a lot of confusion. No one knew what they were fed. No one knew exactly what was going on because it wasn't published no it couldn't be peer-reviewed or anything like that now it slipped under my radar for so long after the fact because it, I as I was waiting for it in 2018 and then 2019 kind of gave up paying attention to it and it released sometime in 2020 and I, as I was going through my catalogs of videos and I saw my video from the past uh, where I talked about that it sparked, it sparked my interest is this video any is this uh study anywhere for me to find did they finally publish it because sometimes studies do go unpublished if it's peer-reviewed and they decide that it's not uh uh it doesn't meet the standards but it was published believe it or not it was published by anna banasi and, and colleagues and um here it is so it was a study that was done on rodents on rats so Obviously, that is a huge limitation, but most studies are done on rats first or animals first before they go into humans so that they can see what happens and that could elicit a, a, a direction that we can go in to test it with humans, right? So this study showed that there were two different groups. There was a control group that didn't do fasting at all, and then there was a fasting group that did alternate day fasting, but it wasn't modified in any way, shape, or form. They did 24-hour fast, 24-hour ad libitum eating, which means they were able to eat as much as they like. Um, and it was standard rodent chow, so they weren't just drinking sugar water, which normally is the case for uh, these kind of studies. They were just normal standard rodent chow. It does have certain forms of glucose in it. Uh, but then the control group was eating the same food, and they was are able to eat uh, ad libitum as well. What ended up happening was that the stomachs for those who were doing intermittent fasting, the rats that were doing intermittent fasting, increased while the stomachs for those who were just eating it normally without any days of fasting didn't increase. But they did also see a reduction in um, food intake as well as a reduction in weight in the rats that were doing intermittent fasting. But they saw an increase in fat mass and a decrease in lean mass, which is also concerning when it comes to these kind of things, because you want to increase lean mass or, ma or maintain it, and you want to decrease fat mass. So just weight loss in and of itself is not successful. You want to burn fat. You want to lose fat. And it also showed that AKT reduced in phosphorylation uh, within the fat adipose tissue and the muscle tissue, which gives an indication of uh, insulin resistance because this normally comes in line with insulin resistance so that also can give an indication to possible uh, uh type 2 diabetes um coming out of that so there are things that are related that could show a path to it but they've changed their title of whatever their study is or they've did not title it that it can possibly give you type 2 diabetes although that is a possibility within the framework of what they were showing us because of everything that's correlated they did not see that directly as they did not see insulin resistance directly for example when doing 
doing the oral glucose test, there was no difference. The blood glucose was the same between both the control group and the the, the uh, intermittent fasting group. And even when they did it through the A1C test, it was no difference. Everything was the same in terms of the blood sugar level. So. So how one would get to type 2 diabetes from that position is not super clear, but there are hints that there's a possibility of that happening because things that are correlated with it, like what they saw with the AKT. But all in all, it was a pretty decent study. I, I was kind of a little bit harsher on them before, but in reality, these are rodent studies and they did it in young rodents because they wanted to see what the effects would be in young organisms and if that could be carried over to children, for example. And they are kind of warning that maybe this intermittent fasting system should not apply or should not be done to young children and, and only should be for adults which is the the which is the recommendation at this time uh, pregnant women uh, shouldn't do it uh, people who have type 1 or type 2 diabetes shouldn't do it and children shouldn't do it that's the recommendation that we have currently but there are a multitude of studies on adults healthy adults doing intermittent fasting where it shows that they're health benefits that are attached to it and there's definitely not anything connected to type 2 diabetes now the rats were gorging and that is something that you must control once you break your fast you are not supposed to be gorging on food and then just blasting your body with this increase in glucose because remember when you are fasting your body's glucose levels go down your insulin drops really low and then it's almost on a springboard waiting for you to consume carbohydrates waiting for you to consume more sugar so when you do you get this massive spike as opposed to someone who's constantly eating where there's a more steady spike because because there isn't a large pause where your body's basically dying for that uh, sugar and ready for it to increase your insulin. So you have to take that in mind. When you break your fast, it's an important thing to make sure that you break your fast with foods that are low in the glycemic index. But this is really far removed from humans. Right now, it's just young female rats that has given us this information and although it is important because it gives us direction there is still so much more to be done before we can make any even close to definitive decision on what would happen even with children uh, th themselves although it's not recommended for them we don't really know for sure what would happen uh, to them because they are humans this is a good guy but humans are humans and that's why I kind of removed myself from talking about rat studies for such a long time. But I had to do this one because this is the follow up to uh, my 2018 review of just that abstract that had released way back then. Well, hopefully this video has helped you guys and maybe understand and anybody who's still lingering out there from 2018 Fledge Fitness and was wondering about this study. Um, well, here it is. It's finally out. Link in the link will be in the description box. You can go ahead and click it. Go over there and take a look for the uh, and take a look at the study for yourself. And of course, Patreons will be pinned in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.